OK, we now have ZAMP sorted out. So we've got our web server sorted out and our development environment all up and running. So now it's time to get going and actually start doing some PHP scripting. Um, now, th I think we'll start off with we'll start off with learning about variables. Variables, the basic building block of any programming language, really. Um, and the best way to think of a variable is a variable is a container. It's a container of information that's going to be varying, and it's a good way of of having some information that varies and some information that's static. What you've got to remember about PHP is it's a dynamic scripting language. It's about creating dynamic web pages. So we want to think about what's going to be varying, and what's going to be staying the same. Um, and to create and, and, and to work with information that's going to be varying, you create these variables as containers for information that, that will be varying. Um, and one of the things you need to think about with variables is, is think about variable type. And um, it's not going to make much sense right now, but we'll just start off and get going. Um, so we're going to create a basic PHP script now. Um, it, we're going to use hello, create something called hello world thing. It's just going to output some static information. Then we're going to create a variable and put the static information into the variable. And you'll see it once I get going. Um, but anyway, starting off, w w any PHP script, we just have the normal tags like this, question mark PHP, and then square tag at the end. Um, they're not the only way of doing it, but it's, th it's the most standard way of having a PHP script. And as with all pro programming languages, you need a way of outputting information. And the standard way of outputting information in PHP is to use the echo command. And echo does exactly what it says on the tin. It echoes parrot fashion whatever information you want to put out there. So in this case, we're going to do hello world. And as far as the programming language is concerned, it doesn't matter what's in those double qu those quotation marks there. It's just going to echo stuff out. And this is quite useful because you can put lots of um, HTML stuff in there. And later on, once you start building more complicated scripts, you can put if statements and logical statements. But for the moment, we're going to start simple. And we're just going to echo out parrot fashion, hello world. This isn't, any, this isn't a variable at all. This is just static text that's being echoed out as per the most simple thing you can do. So I'm going to just save this now into htdocs. So save on the local disk and go down to ZAMP. Where is ZAMP? It's there. And save it under htdocs in ZAMP. And I'm just going to call it hello world world.php. And because I did one earlier, we're just going to replace that. And as per what we've done with the HTML so far, we're just going to stick that on one side. And then we're going to fire up Firefox on the other side. Come on, Firefox. Thank you very much. Uh, just fire it up there. Type in localhost um, hello world.php. Up we come. It says hello world. Um, so yeah, I mean, that that's just simply echoing out a, a simple piece of static text. However, now we're going to create something called a variable, and we're going to put hello world into that variable, and then we're going to echo out the variable. So it's going to do pretty much the same thing, except we're passing into a variable first. And this has the advantage of being able to vary the stuff that's in the variable, uh, which won't make much sense now because we're not being very dynamic. But later on, as things get more complicated and things get more dynamic inter interactive, um, you'll see how variables can vary. But we're just going to create a variable. We can call it anything. Um, you always start it off with a dollar, a dollar sign like that, um, and you can call it whatever you want. Uh, we're just going to call it, we might as well call it hello. Try and keep things meaningful. At the moment, things are fairly simple, so we don't really know what, we don't need to specify too much what's going on. But as things get more complicated, you need to be quite meaningful about th about the names of your, um, your variables. Anyway, we're just going to pass the static text hello world to that variable. And now rather than saying echo hello world, we're going to echo out that variable like this. Hello. And just save that. And it's going to do exactly the same thing. There we go. Um, now, what's the advantage of this? Well, the advantage is you can start mixing up static information with variable information. So say we're going to have just some a very simple script that's going to tell somebody's name and their age. We can start off by defining a variable called name. And we're going to enter the value of, I don't know, Jeremy, just the first name that came to my head. Um, have another variable, say age. Um, he can be, I don't know, 45. Uh, actu actually, that's an interesting point. 45, you don't need, because this is a number, you don't need to put that in inverted commas. Um, so we're just going to call him 45. And now you can echo out and you can start mixing up static information with dynamic information. And the way you do that is you put the statically dynamic information outside your inverted commas and you link it up with a concatenation 
um, mark, which is a full stop. I'll show you now. Um, but say we're gonna. This is static information. My name is. See that's static. Now we're gonna go dynamic. So we're gonna put the full stop in there, and now we're gonna refer to the variable name rather than the static information. And now we're gonna go back into the the, the, the static information. So, th so my name is blah blah name, and my and my age is. Um, and then we just put in dollar age like that, um, and that should come out as should come out. My name is Jeremy, and my age is forty-five. So you can see there that that bit there is dynamic, that bit there is dynamic, and this stuff here is static. So we can start varying Jeremy. We can start varying the name, and we can call him I don't know Bob, and Bob can be a different age. He can be thirty-five. Um, so save that like that and do that and as you can see we, we're starting to mix up static and dynamic information at the moment doesn't make much sense because you have to hardwire it in you have to hard code it in there but as things get more complicated you can create html forms which will allow you to be much more interactive with the people that you're dealing with now we've created two variables and one thing i want to talk about now is variable type now PHP is quite funny in that it's loosely typed. So you'll type in that information and PHP works out for itself what type of information that is. Uh, with other languages such as C++, you have to when you're defining the variable, you have to say what type it's going to be. Now there are a number of different types of variable, but for the moment I'm just going to concentrate on three different types. The first type is string, which is just normal text, so Bob is a string. The second one is integer, so whole numbers. Um, age there is a whole number. Another type, which we're not going to deal with now, but just bear in mind for later, is, is float. Float is when you've got a number and you've got, decimal, you've got a decimal point and you've got decimal points afterwards. Um, so things that aren't whole numbers are floats, things that are whole numbers are integers, and things that are words are strings. As you can see here, we're entering that without the quotation marks, so that makes it a string. No, that makes it, um, makes it an integer. Uh, we're entering this with quotation marks because it's a string. Just something you need to bear in mind. Um, but what you can do is you can test for different types to see what they are. And we're just going to put a bit of HTML code in there and break that off. Remember, I'm closing in quotation marks. And one thing we could do is we could say echo um, is... Now, this is quite interesting because I want to refer back to that, um, that variable, but I want to call it by its variable name. Now, if I typed in the variable name now then it's going to get confused because it's going to think I'm, I'm referring to the value rather than the actual name. So what we do there is we can escape something, do something called escaping. And if I type that in, as far as it's concerned, it's going to ignore that as PHP code and treat it just like static code. Um, so what we're going to be asking is thingamy, is name a string? Now that's just standard code. Now we're going to get dynamic. And one of the functions that we can use, a built-in function, is is type no is int no, is string um, name um, and that should come out as a one oh bugger um, no it doesn't come out as a one is string name no is Oh, I said is sting, so is string. Save that. That should work. There we go. It comes out as a one there to say it's a string. Uh, we could just as well ask. Hang on, I'll, I'll close off that with another break there. We could just as well ask. Echo is um, is name a an integer. And then we can just say is int, and then have name in there. We don't need to put the break in because that's the end of the thing. Um, and that shouldn't come out of the one. So there we go. We're testing. We're just testing for type. Um, and we, this is I put that in there as static information um, just to make it look a bit more interactive and easy to understand. But this here is the actual function, and what you're doing is you're, you're taking that variable there and you're passing it through to the function, and then the function is deciding whether it's whether it's a string or whether it's an integer. 
Um, so just things to be aware of, of, of variable type. Um, and we can do pretty much the same thing for age as well. So if I just copy that there and change that from name to age um, and then obviously just change this bit here to age as well and then put in another break just for readability purposes there we go um, and this is going to test age as well so yeah as as far as it, this is telling us that integer that age is an integer um, rather than a string um, another thing to be aware of is these quotation marks you pass strings with quotation marks and integers without quotation marks but if we put quotation marks around that 35 there it's going to pass in 35 but it's going to pass it as a string which is quite interesting so we save that and then reload it you see it saying it's a string instead so as far as it's concerned that that sort of it doesn't have any what if it's as an integer you can then use it in mathematical functions whereas if it's a string as far as it's concerned it, it doesn't know what it is it's it's just you know static code uh, but that's that's a demonstration of two different types you know integers the difference between integers and the difference between strings and just the way of, of outputting sometimes information as a variable and sometimes as static information um, hope that's that's useful um, we'll be going on and looking at how to actually start manipulating some of that data with mathematical functions.